Well, hello and welcome to a very special Doctor Who themed episode of Daiquiri Blogs. This weekend is a rather special weekend, it has to be said, because it is Doctor Who's 50th anniversary. Now, tonight is the official 50th anniversary story, starring not just Matt Smith, but David Tennant, so 11th and 10th Doctors, plus the rather mysterious extra Doctor, to be played by John Hurt, introduced at the end of the last episode. However, two nights ago, as much as I'm looking forward to tonight, it's going to be good, um, Two nights ago, BBC Two aired a docudrama basically about the genesis of Doctor Who. How it started, the people involved, you know, what it was like breaking new ground with such a, a sort of revolutionary program in so many ways. And it starred David Bradley, the guy who plays Filch in the Harry Potter movies, the somewhat grumpy caretaker. Uh, Argus Filch, I believe, to give him his full name. He uh, was William Hartnell. And alongside him, a brilliant supporting cast uh, featuring um, all the people that were around at the time, so Verity Lambert, Sidney Newman, all the people at the BBC who made Doctor Who come to life really. But I have to commend the BBC on this drama because it was genuinely one of the most moving pieces of, uh, of docudrama of that particular genre that I've seen for a very long time. Uh, it's, it's quite well known now that William Hartnell was not in the best of health um, you know, while he was playing Doctor Who. Uh, he very sadly died of, of uh, arterial sclerosis some years after you know leaving the part, and it made him slightly prone to forgetting his lines and so on and so forth. But the thing is, William Hartnell's Doctor is arguably one of the well the most important because if he hadn't you know crafted the character so well and made so many people at home falling completely in love with him and his kind of mystical magical unpredictable style. Yes, a little bit grumpy, but always at heart, basically, a good, kind soul. And someone that children wanted to be with because they never knew where they were going to go next. They never knew where the TARDIS would take them. And that's really part of the charm of Doctor Who. That's how really it all started. Interesting how they actually wanted to make it an educational show from the beginning. I didn't last for too long. <laughs> the Daleks were introduced at, um, at a time when the express wish of uh, Sidney Newman the head of BBC Drama at the time, was that there should be, quote, no bug-eyed monsters in Doctor Who. Well, has to be said, oh, unquote, uh, that uh, those bug-eyed monsters that came in the form of the Daleks proved to be one of the most popular monsters ever to be created in science fiction, so it's probably just as well they broke that rule. Anyway, David Bradley's portrayal of William Hartnell is really affecting, really moving, and he really manages to capture some of the... Uh, aspirations that Hartnell had, you know, with the part. And there's a really quite brilliant moment, I'm not going to spoil it for you, because you've got to see it for yourself, um, but towards the end where, you know, about, as Hartnell is about to leave the part, you know, he has a moment similar to when David Tennant was about to leave the part. And if you've seen the, uh, the New Year, I think it was New Year's Day episode, when the 10th Doctor regenerates into the 11th, well, it's similar to that. And uh, there's a lot of other lovely little touches as well, so I'd strongly recommend you see it. Obviously tonight, um, back to the modern day world of Doctor Who, is Day of the Doctor. Featuring, I've heard and seen, to be honest, uh, the return of the Zygons. Shape-changing aliens, basically, that haven't been seen in the show since, I believe, the Tom Baker era. I don't think they've ever come back since then, apart from in spin-off stories. So that is going to be, I think, rather good. And there's a rumour, although I must say I don't know how true this is, that Tom Baker himself is going to appear tonight as the fourth Doctor. So, we shall see. Let me take you, if I may, on a little trip around our kitchen and see if you can spot what's missing. So here we go. 
That's Jerry Cat's dinner bowl. Nothing to see here, move along. And here we go, here we go, here we go. There's our Soda Street Band. Oh my gosh! A gaping great big hole. <gasps> There's a hole in our kitchen. Whatever shall we do? There is, of course, a good reason why this big gap is here. Ordinarily, this is where our fridge would go, but unfortunately, recently, our fridge, which we've had for years, has uh, developed faults and basically the freezer stopped freezing. So, well, that's no good really, is it? You can't keep things properly fresh without a properly working fridge. So, we have one due to be arriving tomorrow. Uh, it's a rather a nice slate grey design with a central bit that can be both a fridge and a freezer. Isn't technology wonderful? A bit of a shame, actually, because it was meant to come yesterday, and it did. Except, unfortunately, it arrived with a cracked glass front, so that was no good. So that's gone back, but very quickly they've arranged an alternative, uh, not an alternative, a uh, replacement. Um, although, strictly speaking, it's not really an exchange because we never took delivery of the broken one in the first place. Um, and that replacement is going to fill the spot where I'm standing. So, uh, not for very much longer will I be able to stand here and have quite literally a fridge's eye view of the kitchen. So, I have, I have to say, hugely enjoyed this Doctor Who weekend. I thought that the Doctor Who 50th anniversary adventure was actually really good. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, because it, it had a really well put together story. And, you know, I've been sometimes a little bit critical of some of the Matt Smith era stories because essentially they haven't all had uh, a really as solid a plot as perhaps they could have had. Well, this one was an exception. I have to say. It was really nice, first of all, to see good old David Tennant back. It was nice to see the interplay between the 10th and 11th Doctors, and really interesting to see John Hurt's portrayal of the War Doctor, and the way that the Doctor interacts with himself, is the only way you can say it really, isn't it, is one of the key elements that makes a multi-Doctor story work, and in this case, they really did make it work. So there's that, and then there's the fact that they took an established part of Doctor Who mythology, specifically the Time War on Gallifrey, and basically changed history again. <laughs> See, that's the thing about Doctor Who. There aren't many shows that you can do that with. It's not like, you know, you can't do it all that often in, in things like Star Trek and, and um, you know, Star Wars, where you can go back and rewrite history in one single bound and therefore give the show an entirely new dimension. But with Doctor Who, to be fair, you really can, and they really did with this. So now, of course, it does mean uh, that the Doctor's homeworld is no longer, as it once was, thought destroyed, at least not by the Doctor. So that opens up a whole new avenue. And I'll tell you what one of the best moments of this story was for me, was the point at the end where all of the previous Doctors, from Hartnell all the way through to McGann, and as well a little glimpse of Peter Capaldi's next, I should say 12th Doctor, but actually it's really 13th, isn't it, if you count John Hurt as well. Um, well, you know, to see them all together in that room in the in the TARDIS, you know, those wind where they sort of uh, appear in like little windows of, of footage from the past stories, it was just lovely. And at that, the end, and I, you know, some people I know have said this about the, the show as well, is when they got to the end where they were all standing together, looking up at Gallifrey's his journey that has suddenly become the journey home, and not the journey off into the darkness where no one can find him. Now, of course. There is a little edge of darkness there anyway, because we know that the next story is going to be Matt Smith's last adventure. So it could be a big bang finale. I have a feeling it possibly might be. And I think it's been pretty well publicised now that it's going to be set on trends of law. Uh, this mysterious place where the Doctor should probably quite legitimately fear to tread, because of course it is the place where he's buried. Uh, but you know... Knowing Stephen Moffat, he could twist the story around again and you could end up with a whole new dimension on trends of law. That could, yeah, I mean, maybe they've opened a gift shop, as the Doctor himself might say. Uh, you know, you never know, do you? We'll just have to wait until Christmas for that one, I'm afraid. But, but anyway, well done them, I thought, for a, a really well put together. And, oh, by the way, I have to say, wasn't it great? to see Tom Baker back as well. I mean, I knew they'd have, they had to do it, really. Tom Baker had to come back. But for him to come back right at the end there and talk to Matt Smith, it was just lovely. 
uh, because Tom Baker is, I have to say, one of my favourite doctors, and like one of a lot of people's favourite doctors for many reasons. I mean, he was in the role for seven years. So there he is, talking to his future self, or we assume it's him, because it's not entirely clear that it necessarily is him, but it's, you know, we all know it's Tom Baker, and we know who he was and who he played and all that. So, you know, and there's the mystery, the same old voice, the same kind of mannerisms. Just a brilliant little bit of nostalgia, the whole thing. So, what you know, honestly, BBC, congratulations. I think it's fair to say you did yourself and the good doctor mightily proud. Well, that's all we have time for for today, I'm afraid. Time to get in the old TARDIS and uh, disappear off somewhere exciting into the universe. You never know where he could be next. However, whatever you're doing for the next week, do take care of yourselves. We'll see you again next Monday, but until then, take care and uh, bye for now.